Hey, it's Dan. Welcome back. This is I Allegedly. And uh, I've got a good one for you today. I'm at Irvine Park. And uh, there's so much to talk about because, you know, the economy is completely in limbo right now. Everything that we're seeing points to problems, but it's just on the edge right now. Kind of holding itself together, but not really. And there's just so much to talk about right now. So. Uh, before I get into it, please take a second. Please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button. Share this with everybody. And uh, don't forget, we have an email list that you can sign up for. And if you want more access to me, there's Patreon. And uh, Patreon videos are coming out this week. So you can get more access to me. You can see the Patreon videos and ask me questions and things like that. Uh, plus, we've got Weeble. If you want to trade stocks, it's arguably the easiest platform to trade stocks on. When you sign up for a free account, you get two shares of stock. If you fund it with anything, they will give you three more shares of stock, which are worth up to $3,000 a piece. The total value could be worth up to $9,600. Plus, if you want to trade crypto, you put a dollar in, they will give you $5 for free and give you different uh, uh, choices of crypto that you can uh, choose from. Very simple. Take a look at the link below. Now let's get into it. The first thing is Janet Yellen, our Treasury Secretary is going to meet with other monetary world leaders to discuss the global crisis with food right now. She feels that we're going to have an absolutely massive problem with shortages of food right now. And, uh, you know, yes, without a doubt, I, I love our politicians that do things in slow motion. Uh, we'll do it after hockey season. You know, oh, baseball season ends in, in October, and what's a good time to meet before Thanksgiving? There is no urgency with these people when people are starving, okay? I, I don't get it. So Janet Yellen is going to meet with different world leaders to discuss this um, soon, okay? This is kind of cool. We've got this lake out here. We've got the bench, which I'm going to go park myself on. So, I don't believe this, guys. I don't believe it's going to do anything. I don't believe, I believe that we need urgency with all this stuff, with dealing with the severity of everything right now. So many people write me and tell me about the prices of everything in their business, in their daily life, you know, things that they eat on a regular basis. You know, 60 days, blueberries for one person wrote me, organic blueberries were $3.99, now they're $8.99 for organic blueberries. Uh, I have a meeting tonight, and we have all these people coming over to the house, and uh, we're having tacos at the house, which is great. And, uh, oh, Dan, you make tacos great? Yeah. Everything went up 40% since the last time I did this, because we've done it before, done it probably a dozen times for this group. But, uh, so 40% increase in the price. And, uh, you know, where do people, you know, draw the line and get upset with this stuff? Because it, it's, it's too much right now. It's too much in your business. It's too much with the instability of, of financing. It's too much with the instability with the banks. And then we're supposed to believe that this administration is going to do something about it. And I just don't have any faith in it right now. And, uh, guys, I, I'm really worried about this right now. I'm really worried about the food supply in the sense that, that, uh, you're seeing a lower quality of groceries. You're seeing the, uh, there, there was hundreds of thousands of pounds of uh, produce that went bad at the Mexican border because the trucks were not allowed in because of some blockade. And uh, it doesn't matter which side you're on with that. The fact that that could have fed hungry people is, is devastating right now. You have to stock up, you have to repair for this right now, but I don't know how people budget for this right now. I really don't because when you go to the store and I hear time and again that people are paying more and more for everything, the big concern is the pet food also right now. If your pet is on a special diet, get that food stocked up. Do what you can do. Go to different places. If it's a, from a chain store, one of the pet stores, shop around and get it because you'd rather have six months of that on hand and use it like you would any other food sparingly where you would uh, where you would you know use the uh, oldest supply first and uh, and do that if 
we're not seeing anything get resolved with this anytime soon. Real estate has pockets of insanity. Fairfax, Virginia, there is a house that is for sale for 800 grand. Big house too, 3,500 square foot house in Fairfax, Virginia. But there's a caveat with this one and that is that, hey listen, you can't tour the house. It's gotta be a cash offer. And uh, we have someone living in the basement and you have to buy the house with the person living in the basement. Oh, okay. It's a, a woman and her daughter, they have no lease. And uh, you have to deal with that when you buy the house. Now, in a normal world, you would say, uh, this is insane. I'm not interested in buying a problem right now. But, nope, people looking at it. They got an uh, over, asking offer, over asking price offer for the house. And the house is going to sell. So, big house. 3,500 square feet is a good sized house. Uh, the uh, story is below and you can see the... the um, the picture of the house and again i don't know if that's a typical virginia size house we don't have basements here in california it's not a thing here in california especially because of the earthquakes and fun stuff like that we just don't have it but uh there's that this reminds me of a story of myself that you guys love my stories and i'll tell you a good one uh when i was a kid when i was 20 i bought my first condo and uh it was great two bedroom place really fun uh had a, you know, uh, one and a half baths. It was just nice. It was nice in the city I grew up in and very cool. So a few years later, real estate starts to take off and they built this new community in my city called Tustin Ranch. And in Tustin Ranch, they had all these uh, new townhouses and new houses being built. And I'm like, gosh, wouldn't that be great to live there? So I went out and I'm thinking, well, why don't I move there and I'll rent the condo out. So looked around, saw what the condo would rent for. And uh, I thought, well, how, how am I going to rent this out? I don't want to pay a realtor. I want to do this on my own. So I went to the retirement community. There's a place here called Leisure World. And uh, Leisure World was a retirement community that had thousands of houses in there. They had condos, they had homes, they had high rises, everything, but it was a retirement community. But they had bulletin boards and back in those days, hey, how are you? Can I go put an ad on the bulletin board? Yeah, sure. They'd let you drive through everywhere. There was no security other than some guy at the front gate saying hi. So I put an ad at the front gate for this condo and sure enough, I got exactly what I wanted. I got a retired couple to rent this place and it, they were perfect. Oh my gosh, this guy, loved me this guy paid the rent every month in cash two days before it was due he'd walk in my office and i'm in my early 20s and this guy would pay his rent and would have a cup of coffee with me and told me how much he loved living there and how great you know they were taking great care of the place and everything was fantastic okay flash forward about a year about 10 months into this I told him, I said, hey, listen, I'm thinking about selling this place because when your lease runs out, I'm going to uh, sell it so I can put the money into my condo and do some other, my townhouse and do stuff to that. Okay. The guy says, well, listen, I'm going to look. I love this complex. I want to live inside the complex and I'll look around. And then all of a sudden, um, my mother calls me out of the blue and says, hey, listen, if you ever see anything in your complex that's for rent, I would love to live there. And I said, well, you know, mom, my, my place is going to be available in a couple months and, you know, we could work something out and you can live in my place. No, no, I don't want to do that. I'll, let me just get something on my own and I want to move, you know, right away. And, and again, in the 80s, guys, you could literally, you'd call somebody, you'd have a mother like that show up, put the application in and they'd approve it inside of a day and you'd move in on the 18th of the month. It was just a different time to do real estate. It was just <laughs> very different. So mom's looking around and she's looking at places in different cities and stuff like that. And it's, you know, it's all going really smooth. And um, this guy says, hey, listen, I found a unit and, and I'm gonna make this number out of my thin air. He goes, it's unit uh, 16. If they call you, will you give us a strong recommendation? I said, absolutely. And uh, absolutely give you a great recommendation and, and you know, reference, you guys are the best. I mean, no problem. I get a call the next day from my mother. Oh my gosh, my problem solved. 
I'm moving in your complex. I said, really? Yeah, I found unit 16. It's for rent and they're gonna rent it to me. And they, I told them that you live there, they loved it. I'm like, oh, wow, that's weird, okay? The, my tenant calls the next day, needs to say his attitude changed. And um, he told me that I was a, a freaking liar and I didn't use that word. And that I had told my mother to go rent that place. And he said, listen to me, I want you to understand something. I am never moving and I am never paying the rent. Ever, 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 ever. You're out of your mind. I don't believe you. You told your mom about that place and your mom has that place that we were gonna go rent. So for that, I'm gonna teach you a lesson, young man. And the lesson is we're never moving. So here I am, my 20s. Oh my God, what do I do? This guy's not paying rent. Sure enough, the first rolls around, no rent. No, you know, two days before, the guy would show up, if the rent was doing the first, he'd show up on the 29th when the rent month ended on uh, the 30th and show up with the rent payment. No rent from this guy. And I'm like, uh-oh. So call my lawyer. My lawyer's like, what do you want me to do? I can do nothing about this. Evict this guy. Go, you know, to use your lease and go go get a, get a, you know, get an attorney and uh, that handles this and go evict this. And I'm like, I don't know how to do that. Well, needless to say, about 45 days go by and I talked to a uh, real estate agent and he's like, oh, Dan, the guy that I originally bought the place from. And I said, what do I do? And he's like, oh, I can help you. But you know what? I just had somebody ask about those units and uh, I know that I'll be able to sell it quickly. You want me to sell it? So this guy goes out and lists the place and does a Fairfax, Virginia where he says, listen, we got a problem. If you buy this condo, you got Kookaburra living inside the place and uh, he's not moving and he's not paying the rent right now. So this is what you're, this is what you're getting yourself into if you buy this unit. And will that work? Okay. So needless to say, the guy that bought the place was an attorney and the attorney <laughs> knocked on the door and explained the facts of life to them. And uh, from what I understand that they moved out uh, like two or three days later to, the, to uh, his, uh, his knocking on the door and showing up. Uh, I don't know what he did at all, okay? But there wasn't a regular eviction process. And did I get my rent? No, I did not. Uh, so I don't think that this woman in Fairfax, Virginia is gonna pay these people. And I think the people that bought this house have bought themselves a problem, but it happens, guys. And uh, I love that place too, it was great. I'm a young man, single, having his own place. It was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was a good time. Um, anyways, there's more, let me get into it. Couple more things with real estate that's kind of fascinating is there's problems coming to what they call Zoom towns. And these are remote workers that move to different cities. Like we talked about in the last video, Boise. Well, there's areas in Montana where people that make a decent wage and they don't have to work at an office, they can work remotely, move to these uh, cities in Montana. Uh, a friend of my girlfriend's they moved, they bought a second house in Montana to retire in. I guess it's beautiful and they Airbnb it out and uh, it's great and the views are fantastic and you can see all the livestock and la 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 la, cows, mmm, fantastic, okay? But it's nowhere near a beach, that's all I can tell you. So there's that. But people are starting to see that they overpaid for these houses and they're, they're destroying these communities in the sense that you're having a lot of people come in that are not locals buying things. Now, it's that, and it's also, on TikTok, you're seeing all these people post different things about um, areas like Phoenix, and, and they're doing, where are all these people coming from? And areas like Phoenix are completely overwhelmed with traffic and with people that have moved to these areas that, uh, uh, they just got total congestion and they cannot handle it. So there's that. Now, there's a couple fascinating Elon Musk stories that are that are great. He doesn't own a house right now. So Elon 
you think, okay, well, this, this cat rented a mansion and he's got, you know, chicks, guns, and fire trucks going 24 seven. And it's great. No, he's couch surfing with friends houses. So if you guys, you know, team, I allegedly, we should offer Elon a place to live. If anybody wants to do that, because imagine Elon coming by and sleeping at your house for a couple days. That'd be freaking awesome. Okay. So Elon Musk doesn't have a place to live and he couch surfs. The next thing is the IRS. With tax day just passing, uh, there have been over 70 million uh, tax refunds that have been issued, which I found staggering when I found this article. Absolutely staggering. And here's the thing. I've helped people get a lot of money with their uh, grants and with their uh, their stimulus checks and things like that. And again, this is the last t chance to get your stimulus money, guys. So if you were entitled to a stimulus check, there's a thing called recovery rebate that you can get on this tax refund that if you didn't uh, fill it out this time, it's over. But you can also use Where's My Refund, the portal, to see where your money's at. Now, here's the thing, guys. If you just recently filed or you just filed this week, it takes, on an average for electronic payments, they're running four weeks. Now, oh, my friend got his in nine days, Dan. That's not as long as it takes. Okay, it may be a little faster for some people, but the average return, $3,148. That seems like a lot to me, and it's still up 10%. There was a point in time this year, the average return was uh, over 3,500 bucks, which is crazy, but the average return is $3,148. But give yourself some time. If you did a paper return, it's gonna take on an average of six to eight weeks to get your check. And again, you know, I, I know people that have filed their 2019 tax returns and they I had somebody write me in the last five days and told me that they're waiting for their tax refund from 2019, they still don't have it. Now, the good thing is, the IRS usually pays you interest on this, which is nice. I know nobody wants to hear that, but uh, you should get interest on that. But again, wait, don't, I check the portal every day and I don't get it. I would have people, when I, I did a big video that had hundreds of thousands of views late last year, uh, two years ago with the stimulus checks, and people freaked out about that because, uh, they wanted their stimulus money and they, they were literally asking for it five, six times a day. And it, the, the website updates once every 24 hours. Okay. So share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys, with the real estate, with the people moving. I'm telling you this right now, you know, yeah, you've got some hot areas. Yeah. You've got places like Virginia where people are throwing money and they're, they're buying themselves a headache. A lot of people, are still not paying their rent. A lot of people are still not paying their mortgages right now. And you're, uh, you're starting to see this more and more and more right now. The World Bank has just lowered its prediction on global growth for the entire world. And uh, last year, to give you an idea, our economy around the globe grew at 5.7%, which was pretty good. Uh, this year in January, January 2022, they had predicted it was going to be 4.1% uh, growth. Again, huge difference from 2021, which should concern everybody, but Again, 4.2 is what they predicted in January. Now they just did a revised prediction. They came back and said uh, that it's not gonna be 4.1, it's gonna be 3.2% on the growth. And uh, they see total problems with uh, uh, fuel costs, food costs, everything. And uh, it's a global problem that they're saying right now. Now, speaking of that, natural gas. Natural gas is up above $8. Uh, to buy natural gas globally. It's also at a 13 year high uh, for the price of natural gas. There was some great uh, stocks that used to, if natural gas went up, degas uh, and ugas that would predict, I mean, you could basically bet if natural gas was gonna go up or down and they send stop trading. If anybody knows of anything like that, that's similar to degas or ugas, let me know. Uh, but again, a 13 year high for natural gas, which should be concerning. now. The next thing, the thing that shot up a ton is corn. 
Corn is at an all-time high right now. And you can go, oh, big deal, I hate corn, Dan. Well, here's the thing. You go to the website for uh, Iowa, which is the corn capital of planet Earth, and uh, you can find a lot of information about corn, and I could have spent hours on this thing today looking at that. But to give you an idea, there are 4,000 pro 4, products in the store that are made from corn. So corn is a huge deal, not even including the industrial usage and people that are making fuel with it and tinfoil hats and things like that too. So corn is a huge problem, but it's very expensive, just like everything else. But again, we're being told not to pay attention to this stuff. And, you know, uh, Market Watch, the news uh, uh, aggregator, sent me a story today and said what people should do with their tax refunds and how they should spend it. Guys, again, this is, this, if you're getting a tax refund, it's, I hope you're just not gonna pay bills with it. I hope that you're in a better spot that you can have a strategy for it. But they're saying pay down debt and get you know your debt paid down and use it for that. I, I think right now you really need to, to look at what the best way to spend this money is gonna be. I really do. I don't know if it's buy metals. I don't know if it's crypto for you. I don't know if it's pay off your bills. But sit down and have a strategy and think long and hard before you just throw that money in the bank and just start writing checks against it. Because, you know, three grand will go quickly. I know there's people out there that have gotten, you know, much bigger tax refunds and some people don't get tax refunds. So share your thoughts on all this stuff, guys. But this is a concern when the World Bank is starting to say that uh, things are completely going in the wrong direction and completely upside down. We're seeing, you know, Energy prices here in California go up 30%. Meat prices, 30%. You know, we're, the lie that we're being told that inflation's only 8.5%. And now, you know, all these experts are coming out and saying, hey, the Fed may raise interest rates a half a point. Do you care if they do that? Do you really think that's going to be the thing that's going to put a, 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 you know, a, a Fred Flintstone stop to inflation with his feet out? It's not, guys. I don't think it's going to do anything. I think like experts like Greg Manorino have said, this is built into the economy and things are just gonna continue to shoot up. And remember this, if you're playing the market, there are things that go up when things are bad and you know, you know, get some education on this stuff and where, where you should put your money, do that. I'm not giving you financial advice, but talk to an expert and protect your portfolio. I know people that, oh, I've only put you know, money in the company I work for and uh, sometimes that's the wrong strategy, to say the least. Okay, guys? So share your thoughts on all this stuff. Let me know what you think. And really peaceful out here today. Look, guys, there's a swarm of bees forming on the rocks. That is very cool. I'm going to wrap this video up with these last few stories. And uh, one of my favorites, Peter Schiff, he just said that the... Uh, Inflation freight train keeps coming, and I love this, that we were expecting a big CPI number, they were expecting it to be around 8.4%, and it came in much higher, but things are much worse than the Fed is letting on to us because, like Mr. Schiff said, if inflation was figured the way it was figured in the 70s, okay, listen to this, we would have inflation above 17% right now, which is where it's at, which to me would seem low right now. So there's that. So uh, Mr. Schiff is not buying it uh, like everybody else is too, because you guys have to pay for all this stuff. Think about this. I saw gas under $6 today and raced to get it again, like I won something. So it, it, lunacy. Another Elon Musk story, and that is if he takes over Twitter, which the company that made the opposing uh, offer, these guys have like a hundred, uh, billion dollars under management. They're going to have to borrow the money to do it. It's going to be much easier for Elon to do this if he takes over the company. But he stepped forward over the weekend and said the board will be paid nothing if he takes over the company and bo uh, uh, board positions will be free and unpaid. I, I would love to be on the board, Mr. Musk. Dan from I allegedly. Okay, I volunteer right now. Jack Dorsey, the man who started Twitter, stepped forward this weekend. He's upset because He's saying that uh, Twitter management has no stake in the company. Remember the movie Wall Street? Tell our paper, we need to get rid of these people because today management has no stake in the company. Imagine a board of directors that does not buy into their own company. That's what you've got. Twitter is tell our paper. Don't ever forget that. 
last couple stories. There was a, um, a man and his wife in uh, uh, New Jersey that were driving through Dunkin' Donuts. And when they got their uh, food from the drive-thru, uh, the coffee spilt on his lap. And he's suing Dunkin' Donuts for uh, ever and a day. And uh, for all the money in the world. The only lawyer could write this. Um, his wife have lo has lost the aid of her husband. Uh, conjugal uh, fellowship. And uh, what's the other one? There's another good one. Um, um, uh, conjugal fellowship and companionship. Okay. Only a lawyer could write that. So um, <laughs> it's built on his lap, guys, if you know what I mean. <laughs> that, that's what they're trying to say. Now, the best one is uh, a man out of Kentucky. This is the final story. Uh, he's suing uh, his company. He won. This guy won 450 grand. He was a lab tech. Now, okay, I, I'm telling you this. I've never met this man, but I know this man from being in the medical space and dealing with these different people for these different medical companies. This guy was an introvert's introvert that didn't want to be spoken to, didn't want to interact with anybody, didn't want to socialize. The type of guy that when you invite to lunch, oh, oh, like eat with other people. I mean, that guy, okay? It was, you know, hey, how's it going, man? Uh, uh, okay, Kevin Berling, okay? Well, this guy won 450 grand because his coworkers threw him a surprise party for his birthday and he could never uh, get over it, okay? He was startled and he got a surprise party. So talking about an amazing lawsuit. Life was never the same after this wasn't the same at work. So he sued the company and won 450 G's for that. Crazy, okay? Please do not forget to hit the like button. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Share this with everybody. Uh, don't forget the Patreon channel if you guys want more access to me. Please don't forget the email list. The link is below, you can sign up for that. And also Weeble, it ends soon. And this is it, man, as they say. Apollo Creed, okay? It's done. Done, done, Daru, okay? <sighs> Onward and upward, guys. I will see you guys very soon. We are living in crazy times right now. Be kind to one another and uh, just be nice, guys. Try it. It's free. <laughs>